round, we're very pleased to have Sir Jerry Grimstone, Chairman of Standard Life and part of the UK delegation, joining us on the show. Sir Grimstone, many thanks for your time here on NDTV. So you're here as part of the ninth UK-India Economic and Financial Dialogue. What are the focal areas in the dialogue this time? Um, well, this is a very important partnership, this. Um, it's now in its third year of operation. Um, it was set up by the Indian government, by the Indian finance minister and the British Chancellor of the Exchequer. We've so far produced nine papers, and these are very, very concise policy makers that we have drafted um, to be of direct benefit to the Indian government. For example, um, some of the developments we've seen in India recently in the corporate bond market, in the stewardship code, in the, bank, in the bankruptcy code, I'm very pleased to say have come directly from the work the partnership has done. We had a very important meeting today. Um, this was a meeting where we were very pleased that both um, the Honourable Finance Minister, Mr Jaitley, and the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, was present. Um, also, Governor Carney of the Bank of England, very senior officials from the Indian side. Two new papers were um, presented at this meeting. One of these papers was a policy paper on the liberalisation of the rupee. Um, the path that the Indian government may choose to go down at some point to liberalise the rupee. And another very important paper was on the whole topic of green finance. That is producing finance for green energy projects. Green energy projects, as you know, are projects that are directly related to environmental matters, um, saving pollution, helping with carbon, etc., etc. So a very lively discussion. And we ended up identifying, I think, five or six new areas for activity. So this partnership is very much a rolling activity. Um, we get our guidance from the Indian government. We produce the papers and they are then discussed and they are then implemented. So I feel we have a very good rhythm, um, very good spirit between the partnership. You have 30 of the largest UK financial service companies and 30 of the largest Indian companies working together, all free of charge, doing this to benefit the spirit of cooperation between India and the UK. Is it fair to say that the discussions this time are much more focused and uh, the spirit of cooperation is much more visible in a post-Brexit world? Um, I think the conversations have always been good. Um, one of the topics that we've identified today that the partnership will look at is um, what could appear from the perspective of financial and professional services, what should appear in an economic partnership agreement between India and the UK. Um, practitioners both in London, Mumbai and Delhi are very excited that Brexit might give rise to new opportunities. And we want to work together as a group of practitioners to give ideas to our governments, which when they are free to negotiate, hopefully may appear in a future India-UK um, economic partnership agreement. You know, you mentioned the liberalization of the rupee and the manner in which it can be done, that being one of the areas uh, of discussion. I would love your insights on that. Certainly, certainly. Um, one of the things we drew attention to was a case study of China. Um, China embarked on a, a liberalization of the, um, the renminbi back in 2004. And as well as the technical aspects of this, this has become a, a great driver of Chinese trade and Chinese prosperity. So the pathway that we have laid out for the um, Indian government, and of course it's building on the success of things like the Masala Bond. You could say the Masala Bonds. These are bonds um, um, raised overseas, nominated in rupee. That's a sign of the liberalization of the rupee. All these little steps, we feel, should be brought together into a coherent framework. There will not be a big bang. This is something which we would not advocate happened all at one time. But the idea is, is to construct a, a path which the policy makers could go down, carefully, carefully avoiding the risks, being very conscious of the risks. But we think that such a path would lead to increased trade for India, um, increased um, um, connectivity between financial and service markets and would, be, and would be a good thing for India. Changing gears a little bit, insurance in India, standard life in India, 
growth and opportunities. Where do we stand today? Um, well, as you know, um, Standard Life, we have two very successful businesses in India. Um, we have an asset management company and we have an insurance company, both in partnership with our great friends at HDFC. Um, we've announced in the UK that we are in the process of merging, um, subject to shareholder regulatory approval, with Aberdeen Asset Management. Um, this will make Standard Life, if this merger goes through, the largest international investor in India with very strong positions in um, insurance, in asset management, and, um, and in um, portfolio investment. Um, as you know, we um, next stage of development of our um, insurance company um, is um, a merger between our company and Max Life Company. And I'm hoping that progress will, um, will be made on that. Um, it has been stuck in a bit of a bureaucratic jungle um, but the signs are that that jungle is now beginning to clear. So I'm hopeful that we will see some progress on that in the next few weeks. In the next few weeks, as early as that? Um, I always say the next few weeks in India, sometimes it stretches out to the next few years. I've learned not to count my chickens here until things happen. But all the signs are that that is moving forward. Is there a bone you'd have to pick with the way the Indian insurance market is evolving? All businesses are impatient to grow their businesses, but equally it is very important to have strong regulation. And um, the fact is we admire the Indian, Indian regulatory environment. I mean, it's a well-designed um, environment which protects consumers. Um, if, I have, if I have one thing that I would like to see, it's when you have these complex decisions, which are complex, which involve necessarily many different arms of the government. Um, sometimes the mere passage of files between one government department and another um, does seem, at least to an outsider, to be a remarkably slow process. So um, um, we had a, I had a discussion this morning, the panel did, with Mr. Jaitley, about the ease of doing business in India. And he um, is very keen that the partnership should do some work on, from the perceptive of financial services, how could we improve the ease of doing business in India? And one big thing that could happen in that case would be the speed of administrative and bureaucratic decision making. So Jerry Grimstone, I have many more questions, but I know there is pressure on your time. Many thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I've enjoyed very much talking to you. Thank you very much.